Today I want to take a look at one of the more uncommon pieces of technology that I have, the General Magic Data Rover 840F. Now unfortunately this unit isn't totally complete. There should be a cover that closes down over this and can be pulled around to the back and put under here to act as a stand. But that doesn't hamper the enjoyment of it. This device features your typical 90s contrast slider, a pull-out modem, a IR port, a proprietary connector for Magic Bus, and dual PC card slots. Another interesting feature of the Data Rover is its dual battery system. The battery doors are locked until you push this switch to either open one or the other. Now, this battery is a rechargeable battery that um, is just powered from a unfortunately semi-proprietary 12 volt power supply. And it has a backup battery for if you decide to change this battery out, you will not lose all of your data. So I just lost all my data taking that battery out to show you. This unit also features a stylus integrated into the device. The General Magic Data Rover is significant as it was one of the first portable computing devices to use a touchscreen as its primary interface, something that would become synonymous with Palm Pilots, pocket computers, and later smart devices that would become smartphones as we know them today. Released in 1997, the same year as this Tiger Gamecom, it was one of the first to do this, coming out a little after the Apple Newton. Now when I say this was one of the first devices, I should add a qualifier. The original Palm Pilot was released in 96, a year before this, the Apple Newton in 93, so it wasn't one of the actual first devices, but it was one of the ones that was truly usable and had a lot of interesting features that have moved the platform forward. Even in the Magic Cap line of portable computers, this wasn't first. There were other devices released by Sony and Magnavox that beat this to market. Now I think it's time we start to explore this. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Now since I removed the battery, this is a first boot. And just to begin, we'll go ahead and calibrate the touchscreen. Anyone who didn't grow up utilizing these types of devices, this was a ubiquitous uh, activity that you would perform on any of these. So, here we are. Now, one of the things that's interesting about the Magic Cap operating system is it has this overly graphical user interface. Everything is divided out into rooms or locations for how you'd use this device. Though so you're at your desk, obviously your contacts would be on your Rolodex, and that's where they would be. If you need to make a call, you connect your modem to a line, and then you pick up your phone and start dialing. I was really hoping that would have touch tones, but, you know. You can go out into the hallway, check out the library, where there are all sorts of manuals on how to use your Magic Cap device. You can go to the control room to get to control panel where all of the settings are. From here we can do different things like check out our battery level, set power off options. We can check out different sounds. These are fairly advanced sounds for a device like this in this time period. Let's see, we have... what speaker? Is this speaker phone? Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. We can go back out to the hallway, and we can either drag our way across or hit these arrows. Go into storeroom and you can see how much storage that the device has available. Ah, here we go. So, wow, okay. <laughs> so 
So we have about one meg of storage available to this device. That's pretty good. That is the least exciting game ever. The UI has all sorts of stuff hidden throughout it. Like this cat clock you can tap to go to the time, which you can also do from your desk. But also, in the storeroom, or game room, we can see we have this drawer, and you can tap that and find an item there. From here, we could take our stamps, the note, drag this into here, and then we can type something in, close it, we can see our note, and then close the drawer, and the note now lives in that drawer. If we want to move this note somewhere, we can open our tote bag, move our note into there. Tote bag acts as a sort of clipboard for this. We can also leave our house and go check out some of the larger areas. The internet center would have been fun back in the days when this could have been used, but for now it just stands as a relic of the past. This device has a lot of testing built into the operating system, which makes it feel very beta. Now let's do something anyone who's hacked around on Android has done before and enabled developer mode. So these option buttons to the sides of the screen are actually the same button. And you can hold that as like a control shift or alt key to alternate what things do. If we hit the magic lamp here, we can see we have some basic commands. But if we hold the button and tap it, we can adjust our volume and go direct to the control panel. From here, we're going to go to general and enable construction mode. From here, we can do some interesting things. So let's go back to downtown and we're going to put down a button. There we go. Now, we can click this button and it does nothing. Let's make it do something. So, sounds, songs, and let's do funky. Go over to our button and hit it to hear our song. The operating system has a lot of nice touch features like that built into it. And for anyone curious, this is indeed Y2K compatible. One interesting thing about this device as I've been using it is you will see there are no wires attached anywhere. The original battery for this still works, and it actually holds a very decent charge. I'd let this thing sit for several days and used it for quite a few hours, and it did not deplete that much. So, this thing could actually still be usable today without a replacement battery. Let's see if your modern smartphone is still usable in 20 years. Along the lines of the customizability of the operating system, we can do some different things to our desk area here. We can take our calculator out, put it on our desk, put the Rolodex in there, put our phone in there, and boom, those are gone. You no longer have to look at those. This operating system with its windowing and its many menus is fairly advanced for this period of time for a device like this. This is really cool to use. So let's actually do something here. Let's take our notebook Create a new note, just some plain paper. Let's draw a little picture here. So we're gonna do this Bob Ross style. So we'll have some some mountains in the back here. All right, some fluffy clouds. One on either side. You gotta make sure you don't have just three peaked mountains because that doesn't look good. All right, we're gonna have some forest and the mid-ground here to break up the bottom of the mountains. Uh, uh, those 
Horizontal lines are interesting. Where did those come from? All right, then we're going to have bank over here. A little stream that runs off into the back here. And we'll do it over here as well. Stream going off into the distance. Have some shrubs right here. Over here as well. Little stones next to the creek. A big happy tree right here. Yeah. And we'll do off to either side the branches. And there we go. So now I really like this picture. I'm rather proud of it. I want to hang it up on the wall in the hallway. Let's go ahead, go to our index here, move this into our tote bag, and go out to the hallway. Find a nice spot on the wall. That looks good. And we're just going to hang that up right there. There we go. Some art to class up the place. And if we go back to our notebook and check out the index, we can see that that is gone because it is now in the hallway. It's a very unusual operating system. Interestingly, this even supports taking screenshots. There we go. We have a screenshot of our desk. Well, I think that's about all I have to say about the data over here. Um, unfortunately, I can't really test some of the more interesting features it has. I would love to attempt to place a call with this over the modem because you can actually dial, that's what the phone here is for, and place a call. But I just don't have the ability to do that. Maybe if I get something like a magic jack, I know I tried this through a computer, that would be fun. I could see about doing that. But as it is, there's not too much left to check out here uh i definitely don't think i could get anything that plugs into the magic bus that's a very proprietary connector although not too bad now that i look at it really aside from the shroud here this is just flat i bet a half height piece of pcb would fit in there and work as a interface that's worth checking out maybe um and i have no idea at all what the compatibility would be for uh PC cards. I mean, I could obviously try throwing like a Wi-Fi card in here or something, but there's no way it's going to support it. If you want to learn more about General Magic's Magic Cap operating system, I recommend you check out LGR's excellent video on the subject. As for now, I don't think that there's much else that I can cover without creating or purchasing some additional hardware, so I'm going to have to leave that at that. I hope you found this interesting. I know I was definitely excited when I found this device. I'll see you later.